Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV. Today we're going to take you through an RV orientation on a 2010 Tango 224 RB by Pacific Coachworks. We'll start right here at the front of the trailer. Where you've got your propane and battery systems. To access your propane bottles, just lift the cover off the top. This one's got two 30 pound propane tanks. Both of these are full right now and an automatic switch over propane regulator. Uh, you can see right now, it's pointing at this bottle for the supply um, and that makes this bottle the reserve. As you can see, this little sight glass is showing red, showing that there is not propane flowing from the supply bottle. But if we open this valve slowly and all the way, that sight glass turns from red to clear, showing that there's propane flowing. Uh, what we recommend is that you open the valve on both bottles, then the regulator uh, will deplete the supply bottle first, but then automatically start to pull from the reserve bottle. When that happens, the sight glass will turn red, and you can switch to the other bottle, take the first bottle off, go and refill it without ever shutting down your propane system. Behind the propane bottles is the battery. And this is a 12 volt deep cycle RV marine battery. Uh, two leads coming to the battery, uh, the black wire uh, to the negative post, the red wire to the positive post. It's a flooded wet cell battery, so it does require some maintenance. Uh, we recommend a couple of times a year, pop these two caps off here, and you'll find six cells that are full of liquid. Uh, check the level of that liquid, and if it's particularly low, or if um, you can see metal plates sticking through the liquid, just top it up with some distilled water to the fill line, and put a good charge on the battery. Also recommend that you remove the battery from the RV for winter storage. Store it inside, somewhere where it's not going to freeze. And if possible, put a, a trickle charge on the battery uh, once or twice over the course of the winter. Around the side of the trailer are your stabilizing jacks. You've got stabilizers on all four corners. Once you've got the trailer parked in place and relatively level, crank the stabilizer jacks down to be snug with the ground, but you won't want to actually lift the RV with those. Uh, they're for stability only, they're not designed to absorb the weight of the RV. The best way to level the RV is by backing up the low side onto blocks. Uh, a lot of people just use 2x6 blocks. Uh, we've also got uh, um, RV levelers uh, little uh, lightweight plastic blo blocks that fit together like Legos and are easy to store um, but uh, that's how you want to level the trailer side to side um, right here just in front of your tires is your fresh water tank drain uh, so when you go to drain all of the water out of your fresh water tank uh, that's where you'll do that from to fill your fresh water tank uh, there's a gravity fill right here um, so you can just fill that with a garden hose or what we recommend is one of those white uh, drinking water specific hoses that way you don't get the plastic garden hosey taste in your water uh, your furnace exhaust is next to that only thing to know about this is it does get quite hot so if there's kids around the rv uh, just make sure that they're aware of that uh, don't want anybody you know, burning their hand on that the large vent here is for your fridge. And this panel is removable. You can get in there to do some uh, uh, just cleaning and, and uh, general maintenance, um, but uh, primarily a vent and uh, not much need to access there. Uh, there's a, a vent on the side and also one on the roof for the, uh, for the fridge. Here are some more uh, water drains. These are low point water line drains. Um, your fresh water tank drains from forward of the axles and your water lines drain from behind the axles. If you ever wanted to drain all of the water out of the water lines, this is the lowest point in the system. 
Uh, if you open up all your taps uh, inside and uh, then open these valves, uh, gravity will drain all of the water out of the water lines in the RV. Your sewer tank valves are next to that. Um, two valves here on cables and your sewer termination right here. We supply a 20 foot uh, medium heavy duty sewer hose. It's inside the bumper right now. Um, when you go to dump your holding tanks, hook the sewer hose onto the termination pipe and then pull your black valve first. Allow the black tank to uh, completely drain, then close that va black valve and pull the gray valve. That'll use your sink and shower water to kind of flush out your sewer hose and make for a little more pleasant uh, experience when you have to remove that sewer hose. Next to that is your 30 amp power cord. Um, so it's a, a 30 amp power cord. Uh, we've got the trailer plugged in right now to 15 amp uh, uh, household style power outlet. And we supply the park adapter to break that cord down from 30 amp to 15. Around the back of the trailer, your spare tire is mounted on the back. Um, it's important to note that the trailer does not come with a jack or a wheel wrench. No trailer does. Um, the idea there is your tow vehicle probably has a jack that's capable of lifting the RV if you needed to uh, change a tire. Uh, but I do often uh, recommend to people uh, check your uh, wheel wrench uh, with your lug nuts because you may need a different size wheel wrench. It's not a bad idea uh, to pick up uh, a star wrench or something just to have in case you ever need to change a tire on the fly. Right behind the spare tire, you have a utility shower, pretty simple, uh, hot and cold taps. Shower will extend up to about that high. Uh, don't forget to winterize this when you put the RV away for uh, the season. Uh, we see a lot, of the, a lot of those in the spring that were forgotten in the winterizing process and frozen. Um, and uh, next to that is your city water connection. If you're parked somewhere with pressurized city water, you don't have to fill your fresh water tank. You can just hook up the water right to here. If you're going to do that, we recommend using a water pressure regulator. Just a little brass uh, piece about that long. It's on the end of your garden hose and helps maintain a proper operating pressure uh, in the RV so you don't over pressurize the water lines. this connection with this connection. Uh, this is your black holding tank flush. So when you're dumping uh, the contents of your black holding tank, if you hook your hose up to here, uh, you can spray out the inside of the black tank. Uh, spray off the walls of the tank and help keep the uh, monitor probes clean so that your monitor panel reads accurately. Right here is your hot water tank. And this is a gas electric hot water tank, so it can run on propane or electricity. Um, if you're going to run the tank on electricity, there's a little black rocker switch down here at the bottom of the tank. Right now it's in the off position. That will need to be turned to the on position to run the tank on electricity. I'll leave it off for now, uh, just to, uh, to ensure that the tank isn't accidentally started up with no water in it. Um, there's also two black reset buttons here. Uh, if you ever overheat the water tank, uh, most likely from starting it without, uh, without water in it, you may trip these, uh, res these resets here. Uh, and in order to start your tank up again, you'll have to come out here, press those two buttons uh, to reset, um, reset the ECOs. will be operational again. So the button on the left is for electricity, on the right is for propane. And you can also pull the plug out of the bottom of the tank to drain it for the winter. And when you pull this plug out, there's a rod on the end of the plug about that long, it's your anode rod. Um, and the function of that anode rod is to corrode over time to preserve the inside lining of the tank. So after a couple of years, that anode rod will get quite pitted and corroded looking, but that's perfectly fine. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, but you do need to replace it uh, once it gets down to just the tiny little bar in the center. Uh, the 
depending on the uh, quality of water, uh, that's typically every, every three to five years. Before you pull this plug out, make sure you use the pressure relief valve to bleed the pressure off of the system. Uh, it sits uh, under about 40 PSI normally, and if you pull the uh, plug out before you release the pressure, you're going to get sprayed. Here at your running gear, your wheel nuts are torqued to 100 foot pounds, and we do recommend periodically retorquing your wheel nuts. And your tires are inflated to 65 psi. Uh, it's stamped right on the side of the tire, 65 psi cold, and we do recommend running it right at 65 psi. Uh, another maintenance point on the at the running gear is wheel bearings. We recommend a wheel bearing repack uh, frequently. This one has easy lube axles, so if you were to pop the uh, center cap off of the uh, wheel here, uh, you would see a little rubber cap that can be removed to access a grease serp, and you can use a grease gun to grease your inner and outer wheel bearings. That doesn't eliminate the need to repack wheel bearings, it just prolongs the intervals. Uh, so instead of repacking your wheel bearings every year, uh, maybe you repack your wheel bearings every two or three years. For the step, roll, then flip, flip, then roll. And right here is your awning. Uh, the awning is controlled from just inside the entry door. Black switch that says extend awning, retract awning. button. The awning extends eight feet. You don't have to bring it out the entire eight feet if there's a tree in the way or something like that. And this is an adjustable height power awning. Uh, so if you want to lower one side down, you can release this uh, or just loosen off this tension knob, pull down, and tighten up again. Uh, you can both arms are adjustable, but what we recommend is adjusting one side lower than the other to control where the rainwater runs off. Before you retract the awning, put it back up to the fully extended position. That will ensure that the canvas rolls up nice and straight on the lower Follow me inside, we'll go through a few more things. So right here, uh, next to the awning switch, are a couple more switches here. One for your interior lights, and one for your exterior light, just outside the door. Around the corner from that is your stereo system. So this controls your inside and outside speakers. Uh, there's independent speaker selections here, uh, zone A, B, and C. Uh, just ensure if you're, uh, uh, if you're listening to your music inside, uh, that you've only got your inside zones uh, activated because uh, it's easy to forget and have your music blaring uh, on the outside of the trailer as well. It's also a CD player uh, with auxiliary and uh, USB in as well. Uh, and DVD, um, I should mention, uh, with uh, wiring to the TV location. Um, here in the back of the trailer, some appliances uh, to cover. Um, first is your fridge. It's an automatic Dometic fridge. Uh, so with this, basically if you turn it on and put it in the automatic setting, uh, it will check for electricity. If it has electricity available, it will always run on that. But if it loses power, if you blow a breaker or the power cord comes unplugged or something like that, it'll sense that and it'll automatically switch over to run on gas. You can override the automatic uh, by pressing this button. Then the fridge will run uh, purely on gas, on propane. Um, not very often that you would want to do that, but you might find that the fridge cools a little faster running on gas than it does on electricity. Um, so uh, you may choose to run it on gas for that reason. Having said that, it still takes several hours to cool down an RV fridge, so we recommend uh, 
cooling the fridge the day before you load up. That way it's nice and cold and you'll be to uh, pack your food. Next to that is the oven and stove top. Uh, so three burner uh, uh, gas cooktop with uh, piezo sparker to light the burners. And uh, we'll just bleed a little bit of air off of these propane lines. There we go. Um, anytime you change your propane bottles, it's a good idea uh, to come in here to the stove top uh, and just light up all three of these burners. Once these three burners have lit, you know you've bled the air off the system and you're not going to have problems uh, lighting appliances like your fridge, hot water tank, um, furnace. Uh, this is an effective way to uh, purge the air from the propane lines. The only pilot light that you have to worry about in the RV is here in the oven. And right underneath here is your pilot assembly. When you go to light that, turn the oven knob, the pilot on, push in on this knob, and then light the pilot right where I showed you. Once you see a flame there, keep holding the knob in for 10 or 15 seconds till the flame sensor warms up. At that point, you can turn the oven to whatever temperature you want. When you're finished using the oven, you can turn it back to pilot on and just leave the pilot running or turn it all the way off and relight the pilot next time you need it. Your furnace itself is right below the oven, uh, but the thermostat for that is here on the wall. Uh, very simple operation for the thermostat. Uh, this top slider here just slides over to engage the furnace. Uh, when that furnace kicks on, the fan will come on immediately and will run for a few seconds before the burner actually starts up. If you listen now, you should hear that. If you just heard that click, that was the furnace uh, burner lighting up. In a few seconds, we would have warm air coming from the vents here in the floor. When you go to shut this off, slide the slider all the way to the off position and make sure you hear an audible click. Um, that way uh, you know that the furnace is completely shut off. If it's just turned all the way down to the lowest setting, when you are using storage, that furnace may be coming on unnecessarily and uh, running down your battery and depleting your propane system. Right above that is your monitor panel. So you can see here that your battery is completely charged, fresh tank completely empty, black and gray holding tanks, both completely empty as well. And right here is where you'll activate your uh, water pump and hot water tank. So if you're operating off your water reserve from your fresh water tank, you'll have to turn on the water pump. Uh, and uh, to operate your hot water tank on propane, Turn the uh, hot water heater switch on. This red light that comes on is a fault light. That indicates that the tank is not running. And just like the furnace, if we give that a few seconds, we should hear the, the uh, direct spark and the tank light up. I don't know if you could hear that over the furnace, uh, but the tank is now operating on propane. Right below these things is your power converter. That furnace fan should shut off in just a second. Uh, when the, after the burner goes out, that fan runs for uh, 30 seconds to a minute just to go through its cycle. There it goes. Um, here's your power converter. This is the power center for the RV. Uh, so all of your uh, 110 volt circuits are uh, protected by breakers uh, and your 12 volt circuits are protected by fuses. You've got 15 amp and 30 amp fuses here and it's not uncommon in an RV to blow a fuse so we recommend um, we recommend having some spare fuses with you uh, you'll just need 15 and 30 amp fuses um, and I also see here uh, that the previous owner had the electric uh, hot water uh, breaker turned to the off position and uh, that was uh, I'm sure so that uh, to ensure that they didn't accidentally start the uh, hot water tank up with no water in it 
Um, that's not a bad idea, just as a as a fail safe if you never plan to use the uh, uh, water heater on electricity. The other thing with the power converter. It can make a little bit of a humming or a buzzing sound sometimes when it's operating under load. If your batteries are charging or if you're having high power consumption, it's perfectly normal. It's just a cooling fan like a uh, computer would have in it, uh, cooling the circuitry. Here in the bathroom, not a whole bunch to uh, cover in here, um, but uh, when you're using the RV's uh, sewer system, and you can see a little antifreeze in there right now. We've still got uh, 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 some antifreeze in the lines here. I think we have uh, flushed the antifreeze for the most part. Uh, the, uh, this is just a little residue. When you are using your uh, RV sewer system, you want to make sure and use a good uh, toilet chemical in your black holding tank. You'll put the toilet chemical in through the toilet. It's available in powder, liquid, or tablet form, and we sell all three. Um, and every time you dump your holding tanks, come in here and put another charge of chemical into the toilet. Tear open a package, pour it into the toilet, press halfway down on the uh, foot flush to fill the bowl with water, and then once the water is, or once the bowl is full of water and toilet chemical, push the rest of the way down to dump it into the tank. Uh, that toilet chemical needs some water to activate it, so make sure you put uh, some water down uh, every time you recharge the toilet chemical. Um, FYI, uh, access for your hot water tank valves to bypass uh, is right in the bottom corner there. The easiest way to access that is by pulling one of these two drawers. The last appliance we need to cover is your air conditioner. Uh, so it's controlled right here from the, uh, from the unit itself. And we've got uh, basically two different settings, uh, fan and cool. So you can turn the fan on and you've got low, medium, and high fan speeds. Or you can turn the air conditioning on with the same low, medium, and high fan speeds. The air conditioner can work with the uh, thermostat uh, to uh, cycle on intermittently as it's needed. Um, over here on the side wall, you have your carbon monoxide alarm. Um, this is battery operated. It has its own batteries in it, so you want to check the batteries periodically. Here on the ceiling is your smoke detector. Same thing with that. It's battery operated. It has a 9 volt battery in it. And down near the floor is your propane leak detector. Um, this is wired into the RV's electrical system, uh, so no need to check the batteries here. When, uh, if you hear a uh, alarm from this, it could be alerting you to a potential propane situation, um, but more often than that, uh, it is uh, alerting you to low voltage if your RV battery is, uh, is particularly low. And I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, if you have any questions about the 2010 Tango 224 RB. Uh, you can always get a hold of us here at Trailblazer or visit our website, trailblazerrv.com. Thank you.